10 seconds remaining. All right, everybody, welcome back to the TI4 Chinese qualifiers here. We have a great game with Dreamtime versus Tongfu coming up. Thanks for joining us here on High Ground TV. I am Mott. With me tonight is Kyle Guy. How you doing, man? I'm doing great, Mott. Uh, it's going to be fun. We finally got underway. It was a bit of a pause right there as there was a bit of scheduling issues. I know that a certain very long game might have screwed things up a bit, but we're trying to get back on track. And, well, we love Dota Mott so much. We're, we're eager and ready to just keep the fight going and... Let's get it going, baby. Dream time taking on Tong Fu. Should yeah. be a one-sided match. On paper. On paper. But I'm excited, man. Dream time is the team that many consider to be the number one coming into this. If, you know, number one, number two. Yeah, I'd say that's about right. Many people, I mean, also you look at, they played against LGD not too long ago in like an 80-minute, 90-minute marathon match, which I think we were watching, and uh, just an absolute fantastic game coming in from Dreamtime. Air did some work. I loved XCD on the Spectre. So Dreamtime, I think they're one of the favorites like you talked about, and also they have probably the biggest viewership, I think, out of most of these teams, other than maybe HGT because of ZSMJ. Um, just because, like, people know about them now. They've been around for a while. They've kind of made a name for themselves. At least in, like, uh, from a Western audience standpoint. I don't know how it is in China, but from a Western audience standpoint, these people have fans over here in the West, like in America and in the EU. I know people who are really enjoying Dreamtime and how they play, so... Yeah. No, they definitely have established a name for themselves. And just a few of the deets as far as Dreamtime and how they've been doing for ECL 2014. They're about fifth... Out of six, so they're not doing so good there. One and four. But where they started to shine was definitely in the WPC 2014, scoring a nice fifth position out of 12. They had just beaten out LGD in those very long games, and they actually 2-0'd them. So making a nice stand for themselves. And then during the summit, they went 3-2, and two, but unfortunately they lost to Newbie. But, you know, and then they, well, they started against Newbie, and then they got knocked down the losers, and then they, I guess they had to go against Vici. So very rough road for them there. But they're starting to, to perform, man. They're yeah, a good team. I think, um, honestly, like, that's a rough time in the summit qualifiers. Like, Newbie is obviously TF4 invite. They're a very solid team. One of the favorites. Well, not really. I guess they're very strong. But Vici Gaming is like one of the teams that are like playing out of their minds recently. Yeah. And probably my favorite Chinese team, I'd say, is probably Vici Gaming. Um, so it's no surprise that they go down like that. I feel like Dream Time sometimes lack consistency issues, and their drafts are pretty cool, but always or not always work out for them. So Dream Time will pick up the Night Stalker here, which is like, damn, like wow, like, that's yeah, that's I like that thing. That's it's like Dream Time, baby. At night, you go to sleep, and Night Stalker will beat your ass. I and mean, then at, like, nightmare worked. time after that point? Dream. Night Stalker? Uh, nightmare time. Yeah, I like that. Tom Maybe not so much. Night Stalker <laughs> seems, it gives off a kind of, like, creepy vibe, so... I, I like it. It's an evil theme. Yeah. And not even Darkseer's that attractive, so... It's kind of ugly. Yeah, Darkseer's, like, a... Pointy-headed, ugly thing with the fucking beard. He's, like, a... He's, like a, he's a, a swamp man, I think, in the Warcraft 3 Dying engine, so I don't know, like... Yeah, I don't know what he's supposed to be like right a, now. He looked like doesn't he look like like some sort of like ugly Cthulhu or something? I thought. Yeah, that that actually yeah he does kind of. I can't like, remember. Like it's an ugly Cthulhu so monster. Anyways, <laughs> we should talk a bit about Tong Fu. We should. Tong Fu, you know, people when Ten maybe from the outside kind of got an idea a lot about what happened to Ti Three. Yeah. You'd see Tong Fu and think that they're kind of a big deal, but this is definitely Tong not Fu's the same to Tong Fu team. No. You know, unfortunately, a lot of their members had spread out and. Some are retired, some move on to like newbie and just all over the place. But this new Tong Fu, well, they're trying to make something happen for him. And it's been a rough road. One and four in ESL, six of six in WPC. They're three, one and seven. They're 10 out of 12. Oof. They're one and four in the summit. Like they're Oof. just not getting anything going. And, you know, on the back of like a couple of these up and comers and strong players, like Sorry Fox was formerly from a Hyper Glory team. Um, I'm not sure if he got the boot or moved on or whatever, but now he's a part of Tong Fu and. Well, it's been rough, and but you know, I think they're what one and one right now. I believe so. They actually took one down uh, CIS in that last game, I believe, which one is one. pretty solid for Tong Fu. I believe they used to be called Tong Fu Wan Shang because there was another Tong Fu team at the time, which is now like the new newbie team. Okay, I think that's how it was. Okay, okay, I might be wrong about that. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is a team that's seconds, vastly yeah. underperformed, I guess, or not even underperformed, but I think they just. They maybe don't have the individual skill that a lot of these Chinese teams have. And you can argue that the Chinese teams, like a lot of the squads that are maybe like fourth, fifth, or sixth, could be like up there in terms of skill and like the American or SEA qualifiers. But yeah. I mean, these teams are still like 
I mean, it's a big deal, these Chinese qualifiers. They're still trying to get in the playoffs. And even if they're, like, the fifth, sixth, seventh, whatever kind of slot that people think they're in, they could always, like, somehow step up their game here. You know, who knows how hard they've been preparing for this. Yeah. Dreamtime, they pick up the Lich, which is... Very blue. Yeah, very bluish team, purple they're lineup. They're going to keep it going. They yeah. like the nights times. They like the dreams. They're going to sleeps, if you will. Yeah. And, uh, and apparently a lot of the blues. I like it. I, I, it's I a also, bit sad. It is kind of melancholic, but... Very jazzy. Yeah, I mean... I don't know. But as a support, though, Lich, we don't get to see him a whole lot. No. I like Lich, though. I mean, I think he's pretty good. He has strong lane dominance with the help of that sacrifice, which is great. Yes. He'll probably get a few levels early into Frost Armor, which works fantastically if you're going against a couple of melee heroes, like, for example, Brewmaster's Nice. Right. And, of course, throwing it on the tower now. Thank you very much, 6.81. Oh, yeah. That's, that, pretty, that's, that's a big change, that's actually. Deal. I yeah. mean, it's not global. You can't do it anywhere. You have to be there and present. But yeah. that could certainly help a lot. And, uh... You know, if Tong Fu do decide to build into a, some sort of push, which they have Enchantress now, which is a little bit of that, I mean, yeah. it would definitely help out a lot. But yeah, Tong Fu, grab up Enchantress. I like this hero. I don't think it's played enough, and it could be aggressive. Maybe go for some early ganks temps on the mid lane. Yeah. If it's especially if it's going to be a Night Stalker. Yeah. That's going to be rough. I, I think mean, Tong Fu are playing Tom on uh, kicking his ass early. Yeah, if you get like one or two good creeps for the Enchantress, you could certainly take that Night Stalker down. They have that possibility. Um, I do like the Enchantress pick up here. It kind of is that semi carry that they need. Like, go for maybe an early Midas, depending on how your ganks go, into a Agatum Scepter into Mask Madness, and just deal that right click damage out and just deal with essentially whatever dream time throw at them. But at the same time, Night Stalker pretty good against Brewmaster because you have Silence, so Brewmaster can't get his ultimate off. Mm -hmm. Lich with Chain Frost really good against Enchantress because of all of her creeps. They'll bounce and keep that thing going. If Lich gets a Chain Frost Agatom Scepter, I'm going to just, like, I'll be like, that's the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. Please don't buy it. It's yeah, for people good. who don't know what he's talking about and their new Agatom Scepter buff on Lich is obviously his ultimate will go indefinitely as long as it has targets. So sometimes we've even seen trolly things like throwing the Chain Frost into the Ancients where they will permanently last until someone happens to unfortunately creep by and get nailed by it or something. So, But in reality, though, most of these liches are not going to be going for the Ags, maybe as a late luxury item, but yeah. he's got another job to do. I mean, he does have the benefit in this game. Dark Seer is probably going to be the mech, you know, holder. So Lich has a little more wiggle room to get a few more wards and maybe build into something else, a Force Staff, a who knows what. Five but then maybe remain. Agnums, just maybe down the line and then they move on they grab up justin weaves the weaver which i think is great i like him a lot i i think uh, uh he's very blue which is good yeah he's got the lineup. blue he's got the greenish blue happening yeah here. not too bad it's gonna be tough to gank him the weaver because they they have lockdown yes with like the rock and the cyclone they also i mean with brewmaster obviously they have the center stomp um they have enchantress and getting like a dark troll summoner but that's like that's all they have so he's gonna have an okay game right now as it stands mm -hmm. There's no silences to deal with him yet. You can go like a Bloodseeker. Maybe you'd like a Night Stalker up against a Weaver. Uh, maybe even go for like a Storm Spirit, which isn't going to work because they already have the Brewmaster, so it'd have to be like a Safely and Storm. But uh, with the way things are right now, Tongfu are probably going to be going for Dueling Bottom. Enchantress will probably in the jungle. You can go aggro tri lane, but that's not really going to work. I feel like, especially against that Weaver, they're going to ban up the Anti Mage. They want to make sure that if you're going to go for defensive lanes, that they don't have to go up against anything that's super hard farming, like an AM, for example. Spectre might be the option for Tong Fu if they're looking for something super hard to carry with. We'll see what they want to go for here. Dreamtime, they've got their last pickup right now. They already have their offlaner. They've got their mid. They've got their carry. They just need another support. Oh, yeah. Somebody that works well uh, in conjunction with Weaver. It has to be blue. And it has to be blue. I mean, if it's be. not going to be blue at this point, or at least some sort of hueish teal, turquoise kind of thing, I will be extremely That's let not, down. It's not blue. And, and uh, it's, it's red like, more than anything. Maybe he has like a light in his face and shining up the red or something like that. But How hey, are That's you? the blue we wanted. How there are you? Hey, hey, that, that is hey. a Drow Ranger. Hey, everyone. How's it going? We, uh, we are revitalized with that Drow Ranger pickup. Somewhere... Yeah, my nips are perking. Somewhere somebody that is Australian is... Uh, screaming, giggling even, so... <laughs> oh, and their name rhymes with Bobby. Mm, indeed. So we are going to jump into the game, ladies and gentlemen. And I can't say that I'm not excited for the Draw Ranger pickup, because let, let me be honest here, I, I really am. There was that stigma against it, but I believe our friends NAR, or North American Rejects, would say... Drow ain't that bad. Yeah, let's in the go, hands of the king. Let's go ask. Let's go ask Giannis about him. Hey, uh, that's fogged everyone. Yes, Mott's just trying to act cool because now he's buddy buddy with him. But I'm not, listen, I <laughs> I'm on a first same basis with everyone here at the house. Hey, Giannis, what's going on? He's like, call me Fog Mott. Shut up. Oh, yeah. No. 
That's not he the says case. he says I don't look like a Travis. I don't know what that means, but ten seconds remaining. I don't look like a Travis. Apparently, you look more like a Mott than you look like a Travis. I don't know what that means, <laughs> guys. I don't know what. That, Sorry, Mott. I don't know how to define with my own real name. Shit, it's okay. I lost. All right, a bit of planage apparently from both teams as they delay out the opportunity to hop in. But here we are, Mott. Let's do it. We're underway, finally, once again. Tong Fu is going to be going against Dreamtime, who on paper should be the favorites in this matchup. Yeah, I mean, if you if if somehow Dreamtime like lose this game and uh, go down at one and two, I believe they're right now. That would be a pretty big deal. Going into day number two of mm -hmm. these qualifiers, you want to have a really solid start. We've seen yeah. how teams can kind of like tilt and crumble under the pressure. Teams like Zephyr, who didn't really get a chance to get into the playoffs because of how poorly they performed in day number one. Oh, yeah. Um, so oh. it's really important. Oh, five-man clash. Oh, this we're is what see we want to see, guys. Oh, see like Iron Shell, bat, baby. Void. Why okay. is your Night Stalker not leading the way? Oh. Why is your oh. Weaver leading the way? They're making it go. Shikuchi. But uh, Mr. Liu, oh, is he going to be in trouble here? The body blocks, that didn't work out, really. Uh, what? That was underwhelming as hell. Like, Hi, how's it going? I'm a weaver. How you doing? Okay, see you later. <laughs> <Just> and, <laughs> I'm going to tickle uh, you with my shikuchi. Did they place any wards? They did. That was the important part of this yes. mission, Mott. They yes. creep themselves in the jungle to deny this enchantress from all the potential pickups they could want. So I guess mission accomplished. Yeah, the thing is, she, they could have really like invested and like really warded her jungle here. And, and then she really might rotate up. Ass, but, but yeah, that, that, that's something they're not going to do. Cobb is going to go ahead and ward this up real quick before... We get into the game. Let's get into the oh, absolutely lineups for Tong Fu. Mm. No, also known as Tong Fu One Show, I believe oh. a bit of time ago. It's going to be Kabu will be up in the Dazzle down here in this bottom lane. We'll have Jalib will be on the Draw Ranger heading into this bottom lane, farming as the Draw Ranger. We'll have Mr. Liu Gao will be on the Enchantress. We'll have Ooh Nine on the Brewmaster in that mid lane, and to round it all out, it is going to be Sorry Fox. On the Centaur Wall Runner. And for Dream Time, looking to put Tong Fu to sleep, if you will, in your top lane. We got Dreamy of Dream Time. He's playing Lion. Joining the lane right behind him. We got the Weaver, Justin Weez by XDD. In your mid, we got a bit of a duel here. Very nice. It's gonna be super, not the VG super, but a different kind of super. Playing your support lich right next to him. We got Air. Playing your Night Stalker. It's a stand-in, actually, for Dreamtime right now. And then finally, in your off lane down on the bottom, we got In July, played by Darkseer. Yeah, I don't know if it's an actual stand-in. I'm pretty sure it's just the tag. I don't know why that happened, but it did, apparently. So, well, whatever. It's fine either way. So, Air, he's got a dual lane support coming out from Super, who has, by the way, Sacrifice. Uh, Brewmaster's not going to get a whole lot out of this lane, and shutting him down apparently is very important. Making sure he doesn't get that really quick blink dagger or something like a you know, 7, 8, 9, 10 minute blink dagger is very important for a Brewmaster. He's not going to get it probably in this scenario. These Brewmasters, man, they don't favor the one point Drunken Haze. I don't know why. It's all in North America when they're playing it now, they they love it. And I think it's great. It's It makes it really tricky. It's like similar to like an Enfeeble for last hitting. And if you hinder down this Night Stalker's last hitting and farming potential early, he's going to have a terrible nighttime. Void coming out. A bit of damage. It's still level 1 Void, still level 1 Frost Blast. So, um, inherently tanky Brewmaster because of his strength. He'll be okay for the time being. Sator Tremendous is going to run out of nowhere and just throw a Shockwave real quick. And Super Super is like, oh, whatever, that's fine. I'm just kind of. It's not even that much damage, so I don't really care. But uh, yeah, This lady's got a very nice centaur by her side. This yeah. would work nicely in a gank if she gets the opportunity. But obviously, Dreamtime, they got the wards down. She knows that now. Oh, She's seeing that Fox. nothing is spawning. Sorry, Fox should be okay here. He go. He went for the Stout Shield, so he he doesn't take as much damage, obviously, with the block coming through. He should be okay. I'll salve up as well. Dream, you're getting kind of low, but um, Super is going to grab it in his rune. There is no ward here. Scott, I got the rune, so... Super is going to look for an opening here, and I'm sure Dreamy is going to help capitalize. He has no hex for about 8 seconds or 7 seconds or so. The Shikuchi's going to go. There's the Frost Blast. They need to get this uh, Earth Spike off. They're going to hit it now. But Sorry Fox should be okay. Unless they dive this, I don't think so. Already Super taking a lot of damage from the tower. One more hit! No! Oh my god! God damn it! What was I thinking? Uh, oh, super. Jesus. Super. That's part of the reason why said Tarwall Runner is so good in the offlane. This guy could take an ass beating and just keep on living. And unfortunately, if you go too far, that tower is going to be like... What the hell were you thinking, Lich? Super's just like, well, that's the worst thing that's ever happened to me right now. <laughs> well, welcome to TI4, baby. He's like, I'm in the TI4 qualifiers. Better just get myself up to this tower. So free gold going up for Sorry Fox when he really should have been dead. But uh, he'll be okay. It's 900 gold. It's okay. I got a Blink Dagger now or boots, whatever I want. So he's fine. In July in the bottom lane. Going for the early Soul Ring. Yeah, let's all pick that up. I almost said Mac. I was like, no, that's not right. Zhao Lev getting free farm here with about 16 last hits. So this Darkseer is getting pretty zoned out. Level 4. Actually, he's doing okay in terms of levels. 
Oh, the, the side gank coming in for Mr. Luke Alba is going to be the Poison Touch oh. in July. Should be able to get out of here because he's got level 2 Surge. So level 2 Surge, very strong. Um, he's able to avoid that gank, but mid lane right now. The right click, the Frost Blast. It's going to go air, getting the kill in that mid lane air. No, yeah. strong player. Very strong indeed. And, well, for the meantime, there's just kind of the same pace in the other lane here. Up top, Centaur off the recent, the recent fortune in his favor. And the Lich hanging himself over has been finding his reliable farm. He did go for the boots, but I would imagine being a Centaur, you're going to look to build into that blink there because you want to get shit done. He's coming in from the side right now. Get a quick stomp off if he can. Nope. He will get hexed instead. Turn to a frog. Is he getting a bit of right clicks? There's the uh, earth spike. Is now he's, he's got to run back. And I think he's dead. Oh, what the hell's happening? Oh, he's going to double edge. What a player. Yeah, worth it, baby, as he rips apart the weaver. Very Damn. good stuff. Damn. A sacrificial move, but well worth it. But it is now nighttime. That is something to keep in mind. So oh, even though they lose the weaver, they've got air. He's on the prowl. This Night Stalker, a bit of a perv, but he's looking for somebody. <laughs> Bit of a perv indeed, as he's going to look to probably put some Maiden to sleep here. If he can catch out the Enchantress, that'd be pretty swell, or even the Maiden Drow. So we'll see what he does for his first night. He's fortunate enough to hold this regen. He's going to make his attention go towards the mid lane. This brew, not even level 6 yet. It's got to be careful. There we go, baby. Makes a move in with the help of the Void. Can the Lich add to it? There's a bit of an Ice Blast, and they go, I can't do this shit, and they pull right back. Maybe like a DD rune or like a haste rune or something that would get that kill. Anything think. besides a regen. Yeah. And I mean, an illusion, I guess, wouldn't help. Regen's either. like good in certain circumstances, especially if you're farming and you want to get back to lane. But as a Night Stalker, you want that like ganking rune, like a haste, a DD, an mm -hmm. invis, anything that helps you kind of get the jump on somebody else. And that was not the case for. Uh, as they were trying to go for Unai and did not come out there. So XDD did go down that top lane, but he's still farming pretty well. He's the top of the CS charts right now at 24 last hits. And like I talk about, I, I say this a lot. Nice ward also coming out as well. So Air's going to get spotted here and Centaur's just going to back off. But I talk, about, I talk about it so much. Like Night Stalker, it's not just about the first day, or first night rather anymore. It's about the first two nights. Yes, you would like to get a kill mm -hmm. on this first night. Absolutely, mm -hmm. it's going to help you out a lot. But like... Mm -hmm. If you don't, and you're farming, you're still okay. If you're not farming, or you're not getting kills, and maybe even dying, you're having a very rough time. They're going to head back mid, and Unai might be the target here. Well, they're going to be waiting for a little while here. and Well, Brew, he uh, still level, not level 6 yet, so if they do make the jump on him here, he will not have Primal Sprint, and that's pretty unfortunate. He actually catches him out now. There's a Void. He's going to be very low, and he might be dead. Yep, Earth Spike to follow, and... Unfortunately, I guess the game the game sense tingles are not happening as he should have noticed that plenty were missing from the map and especially the Night Stalker himself and just got a little too past where he should be. Yeah, but they're going to take this tier 1 tower bottom, which is great for Tong Fu. It gives them a good start. In July, can't really help uh, that happening, but he'll get more room to farm. But Aerie's going to come bottom. They have a ward here. and Mr. Liu Gal is like, get me the hell out of here, man. I'm, I'm leaving. Uh, Invis is gonna go. Kabu might get voided here. Look at that. Oh, and Shell, the silence coming out as oh. well. The crippling fear, the right click might be enough, and it will. Jalev gonna get dove now as well. The Iron Shell again, still on air. Air wants to go hard, man. Now the Stampede did go. The silence might come out in a second. They need to get this kill. Search for Jalev. He's gonna fall down. Double kill for in July with that Iron Shell. Damn. Man, that Centaur ultimate would have been beneficial if it was a little bit earlier, but I don't think they counter on the fact that that Night Stalker getting so close with the benefit of Invis. Now, Enchantress was here. When she saw the Night Stalker pop the Invis, so I don't know if there was a communication problem or what have you, but I would have figured she would have made some, some sort of call and just maybe they had even considered ward. pulling it out. They but had this ward right here. Yeah, they just so, went down, I mean, so it would give vision of that Invis room down the bottom. If Centaur triggered that ultimate, maybe they'd make a push to the tower and get away, and you know, Centaur could have potentially TP'd down to rotate and help out. It could have gone very differently, but unfortunately they do end up falling, and now Night Stalker has met that quota on the first night. I don't think they were expecting the Night Stalker to be that aggressive, but if he's got Surge and if he's got, like, decent help on the backside, like an Iron Shell. He's going to get those kills, so mm -hmm. that's a really solid start for Air. We talked about how important those first two nights are going to be for Air, and he's already got it done in that first night, so they're going to try to keep going on bottom, though. Dreamy you, the Earth Spike. Kabu ah. does not have Grave. Tong Fu getting wrecked. Kabu going down. Jala, they'll throw out the silence. And July's like, yeah, I don't even, I don't even care at this point. So, but now the fight continuing on the backside. Now, Chain oh. Frost and the ult coming out from Dreamy. You blown the hell up. The one-two punch from the supports. Damn. Very nice. Caught him right out and immediately ripped him Radiance apart. And the support farmage coming out on Tong Fu is just very lackluster, man. Not even anything in shallow grave yet. I mean, they got to start stepping it up and be able to hold together these teams. It's like, look at the levels though. 
It's like level six coming out for the lion and level seven for the lich, which Unreal. is like really I mean, solid. Like level four and level three for the supports on Tong Fu. Like this game is getting quickly out of hand because the level is coming out for the supports here. Air has done an excellent job in that mid lane. He's like, pretty much won the lane, even though his CS maybe isn't the best in like in comparison. I mean, he's only one behind the brewmaster, surprisingly enough, despite all the ganking. U9 is nowhere near his Blink Dagger right now at 8 minutes in, which no, is unfortunate. XDD is getting solid farm. So if you're looking at Tong Fu right now, you're saying, hmm, it's not going so well. I mean, Sorry Fox seems to be the prominent one for his team right now. He's building a little closer to getting that Blink Dagger, and hopefully he can kind of help everyone out and give him a little more, you know, a morale booster if you get a couple of pickoffs in the mid game with the benefit of that Blink Dagger. That would help out a bit. But overall, man, Dreamtime just showing why they are considered to be on top. They're... they're action right now it's very aggressive it's very assertive mm -hmm. but objectives are getting completed man yeah i mean they're getting kills and that's really all that matters they're getting farm eventually they'll translate that into towers and they'll go from there so for the rest of tong fu you've got to wonder at what point you stop farming up this draw ranger and you start rotating you start getting kills elsewhere because the thing is right now they've got two kills to the name which have been byproducts of maybe some misplayed aggression from tong fu you think about the first blood in the top lane with the ledge going under the tower mm -hmm. that, i mean like i don't really even know where the other kill came from but you know, i'm sure it was uh, the byproduct of a kill that came from dream time so draw ranger is going to go for a morbid mask right now well, More Centaur than, like, killed himself killing Weaver. Sorry, I didn't okay. mean to interrupt, but I was that's like right, thinking real about, about that, that one. So it's still very that. valiant, you know what I mean? Yes, yes. That's good. So, sorry Fox. I mean, he's got two kills, which is not bad, I suppose. He did get that Weaver kill, which is actually... If he doesn't get that Weaver kill, and Weaver has complete free form in this lane, other than that death, like... He's, like, looking at a very early Lincoln Sphere, but no, he, he goes down, so he misses out on a little bit of farm. He's only got 50 mm -hmm. CS at about 10 minutes, which is standard. You'd probably want more out of your carry, but XDD on a Weaver's not bad, so he'll work towards his Lincoln Sphere next, I'd imagine. I don't think he's got anything on the Curry right now. There is a Mech Recipe yep. flying out for Dark in Seer. July. Yeah, yeah, very wow, nice. Wow, that's done already. That's a good That's a good time right there. Yeah, it's pretty Dark solid. Dark Seer's going to pick up that extra Mech, and as I said in the draft, that, you know, relieves a lot of pressure for the other two supports who... Are actually already having a very nice game themselves. So I'm curious to see how they're going to make something work. I would imagine Lion's going to build into that blink. Yeah. Add that extra initiation, which is going to make things nice and spicy. And for the Lich, well, he's just kind of more on war duty for now. DT, they're going to smoke up. They're going to head down to the bottom lane. And, Let's do it, baby. You know, I mean, this is... You know, we'll it. Stuff right I now. mean, Air actually has darkness if he wants to pop it. It's not nighttime yet, obviously. So it's actually two minutes before that. He might pop it if they find somebody out of Dyer's position. I don't even think they need it for attack. Kabu. Like, if he gets silenced or even, like, hex stuff, he's oh dead. Oh, God. Oh, God. This surge. This is bad. They surge up the line. They haven't the spotted dazzle. Kabu yet. They have not yet spotted him. Oh, they God. still don't know he's there. They finally see him out of position. Oh, God. Kabu seems to know, though. He realizes... I think he saw the Iron Shell go on a creep or something. I'm not... There was a Sentry Ward here, actually, which... No, that's not going to work with the smoke, so... Kabu rotating smartly. Look at where Zhao Lev is as well. He's not going to go down to this. That is, you don't get more in a defensive spot than that. She, oh god. Oh, oh, they're going to see each other. Here we go. Wow. They're going to duke it out. One on mono e mono here with the help of the push and silence. He's got to retreat back as everyone rotates in. Here we go. Sorry, Fox. Steps it up with a big slam and will be able to take down the Night Stalker. But there goes the wall. Chain Frost to fly out as well. The nice primal split will stop it. Dazzle lives with a shallow grave. But the Chain Frost still going apart. And you can see in July, manages to rip apart and take down the Drow in the end. And now Lich. Gonna make a swing around. They're looking for redemption here. Nice. Oh, very nice mech able to help out. And now they're running back and forth. The Surge, Lich, stepping aside, and we'll go for the TP to. Oh, and Dazzle ends up going down. Lich does get away. Only Night Stalker to fall. Now the Weaver on the hunt. Wants to take down the Panda. Obviously, use the Primal Split. Will not be able to get away here, and it should take just a couple more right clicks. And oh, oh stick charge. Tempered one. Nope. Slam won't even be there to help. And. Enchantress is going to be one of the lone survivors to tell the tale. And that looks so good for Tong Fu at the beginning of that engagement. You're like, yeah, I think they could do this. They had a really good burst damage on the Night Stalker. They got him down quickly. The Enchantress ran out of mana about halfway through that fight, so she couldn't throw the impetus, which is doing so much damage to the Lich. He survived. Excellent mech from in July. Uh, when it was all said and done, it was like a one for four trade. Uh, and Tong Fu, that was like their best engagement they could possibly get, but it really didn't work out. Air going to get stomped in the mid lane. It is nighttime. He's got that Ogre Club. Now the Frost Blast going to go. Air is going to get Ice Armored. And now they'll back off the Geminid attack, or rather the Swarm coming through. Will miss on Sorry Fox, just barely. His Blink Dagger still not there yet at 12 minutes in. Yeah, a bit well, of a rough game. That bottle, that uh, battle bottom definitely had uh, prolonged his Blink Dagger, unfortunately. And he just really needs to look into committing 
to getting it. That way they can try to make a, a bit of a game changer here. And for Weaver right now, he's going to start pelting away with his buddy Lich and see if they can bring down this tier one tower in the top lane. Look at the Sakuchi Ford. If they want to defend this one out, Centaur's going to need a little more help than just himself. Yeah, and they, they might send some more heroes here. Um, Brewmaster Ultimate is still not back up for another 37 seconds, so I don't know if they really want to fight this. And I think DT can just take this down as quickly as possible. Night Stalker's here. It's night time. Blink Ford. That's a blink up on mine already. They're going to use the Frost Blast. Easy kill. Damn. A blink on the lion before Centaur can even get his. That just shows how this game is going so far. Dreamtime are just... It's not good for Tongfu. Yeah, they're getting ready to just take control of this game and shut down Tongfu and show them why we're so good. And they continue their assault, pushing forward now, drawing attention towards this tier 2. And it doesn't look like at the meantime that Tongfu even want to consider defending this one just yet. They're going to need a lot more assistance. Drow is going to need a lot more time to get anything going. Looking to build towards that Mask of Madness and also halfway between Ayasha. But that also leaves her very, very weak. So if she gets caught out... She can be bursted down very quickly. She wants this value morbid mask, man. She doesn't want them. She don't want. She doesn't want mask madness. She knows if she goes for mask madness right now, she's gonna get blown the fuck up. So yeah, I would agree. If she if she picks that up, she dies. I mean, well, even if like the thing is, she probably wouldn't use it. So blade of lacrity, ban of elven skin. She'll get the Asha instead. So the morbid mask is just there to help her farm, which is not bad. But at the same time, you're like, all right, well, is that really giving you anything? It's giving me life steal. So and the Lich making things a lot more worse as he quickly dewards this whole upper area and takes that extra vision away from Fear Tong Lord. Fu, you know, crippling them even further as they control the map. And well, Tong Fu have gathered here in the mid lane. Centaur obviously needs a lot more time before he can even get his blink, but they're kind of stuck, just circling around each other, scratching their heads, scratching their ass, and trying to figure out where the hell we're gonna go from here. They need to get. A really good smoke into a team fight where they pick up one hero and then somehow Dreamtime mistakenly commit to a fight that doesn't favor them. So Tong Fu, they need to get a pick off. And, or even like, we've seen smoke roach work. I don't think it works in this scenario because there's a tier oh. one tower still mid. But speaking yeah. of smokes, oh boy. guess who's on the hunt here? The Night Stalker. This guy. The Predator. The Prey? Well, who knows? It might even be the Steel Player. Sorry, oh Fox. God. There's the Silence. Oh. There's the Earth Spike. There's the Frost Blast. That's and the supposed void. to be your fucking hard ass bodyguard kind of a guy right there. And he got. That's, Blown up. That's not, that's, not, that's not what you want from your centaur. Oh boy. Which actually has a Vitality Booster. He's going for Rotobatos. Okay. The Rotobay UI now coming out for the Lich here. Super's going to grab that rather soon. And good item. I think it should be. I, I don't imagine it'll be anything else other than that. I mean, I'm pretty sure. That's the only one, thing I can think of. It's, like a, it's a value booster. Stone. In the time, yeah. Bloodstone and the Lich. Definitely a good item. Uh, no. New Mitha. Blood Lich. But, Stone. uh... Also in July now, getting a plate mail next. He's got 1,400 gold in the bank. He talked about the, the lion and his blink dagger. Like, there are just so many items starting to come out right now. The thing is, actually, Weaver's not even that farmed. He's got Treads, Aquila, and he's going for a Mythal Hammer. So either it's the start of a BKB or more likely than not a death. So he doesn't really need... I don't know, man. He doesn't need I anything think, else. I, I think they feel pretty confident. This might be an early death. So I, I feel like it has to be. Because, like, okay, what are you really afraid of? Yeah. Enchant, maybe, which doesn't matter. Stomp's not going to matter because it's AoE. Double Edge, maybe, does a bit of damage. And then all of the Brewmaster's abilities when he's uh, when he's ulted up, but that's it. Like Drow Ranger Silence is AOE. You got Mech, you stuff. got Mech on your Dark Seer, yeah, wall exactly. and everything else to help you out. You got Frost Armor, yeah, and everything. exactly. Like you don't have to worry about any sort of trouble. You're just gonna get in there and beat the fuck out of this yeah, yeah, Tongfu yeah. team with that Dyer's Desolator. This is this is unreal. I think Dreamtime even though they have the upper hand in this one with by that kind of a style. So I mean, we'll see how they can make something work here. A little bit of tension here up to the top. Tongfu looking to get something going in the favor. They need the extra pocket change. They need to take down these towers, but it looks like they're gonna back up. They're like, this isn't the right time. Now, if their Drow had a little more farm and a little more damage, maybe they could sneak into the Roche Pit. I mean, they have an Enchantress. It'll make it very easy, but it'll take it'll take way too long. We'll be here all day if they even try to take down Roche at this point. So they, what's plan C at this point? Plan C is like, I mean, if you're not smoking up like you were just then, I don't know, you, you defend at your towers. But at that point, you're going to lose every fight, I feel like, because of the reasons we talked about. So... For Tong Fu right now, I mean, they really have very few options here. This is a very low percent chance. Not even them. one point in Drunken Haze. I, I'm, I'm not a big brew player myself, but I just feel like with the heavy assault coming out from a Weaver and from a oh, Night yeah. Stalker and stuff, even just 45% that they miss... I, I agree with you. I think it's totally worth it. I, I agree 100% with you. You don't really need four points of Drunken Ball. You really need that crit damage coming out. It's not like... Damage is, is but they're yes. not on. They're not playing aggressive right now. It's so defensive from them. You know? Yeah, I feel like Drunken Haze could change the course of the team fight, but also at the same time, you're gonna get blown up anyways. So maybe that's the reason. But uh, I agree with you. Drunken Haze is very solid. So also, it's a good slow too if you're trying to chase somebody down. So um, 
and he will pick it up now at level 10, which is fine. You know, he's just, he's yeah. a solo mid, so he is going to get, like, uh, at least one point rather soon. But he's been shut down hardcore. There's still no Blink Dagger 18 minutes in on Sento Warner. That would be such a big boon for them. Just having Blink Stomp double edge initiations would be freaking big for Tong Fu. And they just can't get there right now. It's a situation where you're looking at Tong Fu and you're just like, please do anything. Do something. And they're just not able to really grasp anything right now. Dream Time are getting everything they want and more. And that's not the case for Tong Fu. Dreamy you over here on the left side, as you can see. Yep, has uh, been daydreaming a bit as he sits in the woods and waits for the right opportunity to make a jump in. Maybe someone defends here. Drow's nearby, but not committing to it just yet. And so Darkseer shows up, asserts himself in the lane, pushes it forward with the benefit of the Ion Shell. Now, here's Drow. Drow's pretty weak. Is it weak enough for a lion to take down Solo? Probably not. So if we can get one more on the scene, that would definitely help out. I know, man, man. Look with, at these blinks. With, Blink with, City happening right now. With Finger of Death, Shatlum's not the tankiest hero in the world, but he's got help now as Mr. Lee Owl is here. So the Enchant is ready to help out if necessary. Uh, but Dreamy is still in the trees. Staying in the trees, according to HYH, was very important mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. July. Now pushing down here in this mid lane. And uh, I don't know. I feel like DT could be a bit more aggressive. They're probably waiting for the Weaver's Deso at this point, which she's very close to. BKB for Night Stalker is pretty important as well. And uh, next night time, too, is probably the biggest thing. Yeah, they might even just wait a bit for that, but uh, they're feeling a little eager, it looks like, potentially in this mid lane, or frost starting to frost armor everyone up right now, even Lion. Had made his rotation over. Blink in, gets the uh, Earth Spike finger, Damn. one two punch, leaving it perfectly for the Weaver to clean it all up. Not even Centaur can help out, but he does show up. Are they actually considering making a fight here? That's not a smart idea as they vacuum through a wall and Drow on the run. Oh, this is supposed to be their big core carry right now, and she cannot. What are you oh, doing? Get away. The swarm you... flies out. He sidesteps. They can still see her right now. They let up, it looked like a little bit early, but man, look at that. XDD cleans up another and moves on to a double kill. Two for nothing right now. Tong Fu, man. Three to 16. It's, it's worse and worse, man. It's just not happening right now. At some point, you've got to say, we need to regroup and we need to try to think of a new strategy because this, this ain't working right now. This just is not working. Blink forward from Sorry Fox showing off that new shiny Blink Dagger, but that's not really going to help him out in that scenario. They get a nice weave off onto four heroes. That armor reduction, damn, that actually is really nice. Yeah, especially it could, with the it could make them even second guess pushing, which it looks like they will yeah. now. They're going to pull back. You know, they, they got a nice aggressive lead coming out for you. Why bother throwing any of it away? You got it's it's just too good right now. And with your extra set of dominance, maybe you consider making a move over, doing the Roche a little bit. The Frost Armor definitely helps with that. I don't think anyone's going Medallion, but I think it's just the balls in DT's court. They can do whatever the hell they want. Yeah. I mean, they have the top three net worth. They have so many items coming out. The Deso is now finished with Weaver, the Weaver, rather. Um, so armor reduction plus armor that you have from Frost Armor from DT's Lich plus the right click of uh, Night Stalker, which isn't all that great without an armlet or something like that. He's got a BKB, which is okay. Maybe like another item. But it's still pretty solid, so... He's going to buy a point blister. He's going for an Aghanim Scepter. No surprise there. Mid lane Earth Spike onto Kabu with a Frost Blast. The Stampede. Good grave to save his life. But now Ooh. here we go. Big stop. Okay. They turn it around. Okay. All right. Two dead. And the gems on the deck. XDD. Did he pick it up? He did absolutely. Wow. And he got right out of there too, man. They did not know he had the gem. Wow. He quickly shows up, snags a gem, and time lapses himself way back out into safety. Wow. Quick reaction time coming up from Dream Time. Uh oh. Wall is on the ground. In July, he's not used the vacuum. He got silenced up. BKB for air. He gets one down on the back side of things. Sorry, Fox. Getting chased down here. That's a double kill for XDD. U9 getting away just in time. The Drunken Haze actually helping there. But still, uh, a buyback coming out for DT. They had to use one. I believe it was the, uh, the Lich you bought back. Yes, absolutely. So now they're going to make their way in the Roche Pit. And they'll take the victor and the victor go to the spoils. So. It looked like a good promising start from Tong Fu as they caught out two of DT really quickly and then they looked they fumbled a bit as they weren't quite sure the gem was there and then man Dreamtime were just like guys we still got this, we got a buyback, let's just go and they all committed to it immediately. It just shows that Dreamtime man, they got some great team coordination. Yeah, they really and they can make plays like that and they all back it up. There was no hesitation from anyone, they went right for it. So good stuff from them even though they were caught off initially and man, it's gotta be a little bit more morally defeating here for Tong Fu. Is, yeah. That looked like one of the more promising moments for him, and it's still They're starting well. to get something going. They have a couple of items. There's the start of an item scepter for a Brewmaster, which is okay. Super's getting chased down. He's going to get Surge. In July will blink away nicely. The gem is up on Lich right now. Drunken Haze not going to go, or Thunderclap, rather. Stampede's going to fly. XCD still with that Aegis. Time lapse away. He's actually in uh, the back here. And, of course, coming up the river was going to be area. He decided against it. 
So listen, I don't know about this. This is maybe not the best idea. Nothing on the courier for air right now. Still has that point booster in uh, 500 gold in the bank, but for dream time right now, they just need to keep playing their game. Tarmac 4 are kind of traveling as 5. They kind of have to. They're getting picked off too much. The Drow is farming okay. 94 last hits right now. She's caught up okay, but uh, still. I mean, dream time can just... Uh... Pretty much decide on what they want to do, and I would imagine that he'd get a little more aggressive. Now that it's nighttime, Night Stalker's ready to get something going for himself. And well, for Drow, it's I need a lot more farm real quick. Completes out that Yasha finally. 1500 gold ain't that bad, but you're going against a lot of trouble. And it's going to come down to proper positioning by her not to risk handing herself over too easily. She's just such a such a problem right now in terms of like. You, you need to make sure she stays alive, and it almost feels like she's a burden. That's that's the word I was looking for. Burden was the word. So, uh... Mm -hmm. She has some damage. She's got the Ogre Club. She's building into a BKB now. She... Or maybe an SMY, actually. I mean, if you have the Ogre Club, it maybe is likely that you go for that item, which is an okay early game item to snowball with, but since you're not getting kills, it feels like maybe it's a bit forced, and Maybe even they do go for BKB on her. The thing is, she's just getting right down by XDD. The Weaver is going to go hard. They're going to go for this tier 2 tower, and now it starts to kind of... This is where DT are going to make their, I guess, aggressive play. They're going to start looking for tier 3s very soon. They're going to go for the high ground here, maybe, or at least just try to pressure it. They have the Aegis still, I believe, on XDD. He's going to have an MKB in, like, five minutes. Less than that, actually. Oh, it's getting out of hand. I mean, and they're happy to bring the fight to them, even if they bait the Weaver forward. You got Darkseer hiding in the backdrop. He's got a Blink Dagger. You could jump in Vacuum Wall. Might even consider going for it here, but no Brood. Just kind of looking to trade a little bit, but you got to be cautious, man. These back supports, they have Blink Daggers. They will jump in and aid their core if they try to make a fight happen. So Tonk will have to be so careful about what fight to take and win. Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. The Blinks can come at any time from uh, DT. Dreamy, you can just jump in and hex and then just earth spike and kill everybody. With well, not everybody, but set up kills. In July, he's the one that can kill everybody with a vacuum wall. Yeah. So they're gonna play safe though. I like this choice from Dream Time. They don't need to force anything. Get your like MKB up for Weaver. Don't do that. That's what I don't want you to do. We've already had a long enough night. It's interesting that they have a pause. This is if people didn't already know, this is being done in the hotel. Actually, I think I wrote it down. Come on, I nerded it out today. Let me see here. This is all done together. This is a yes. big event. This awesome. isn't like people doing it from their bedrooms. Yes. Or like us in Zyori's bedroom. Mont, if you didn't already know, they're located right now at Long Wish Hotel in Zhangjin. I don't know if I said that right. Uh, Zhang, yeah. That's Zhang, Zhangjin. Zhangjin. Zhang, Zhang, I'm I, sorry. I do not know how to pronounce Chinese. I Anyways, they're so all sorry. playing in these games. Here, and I'll, I'll write it down when they chat. go into the playoffs, they're going to be in front of a live audience. So it's a big deal. So it's a little surprising that there's something wrong because this is like a LAN event right now happening. Yeah, maybe it's just a mouse issue, or maybe a peripheral issue. Maybe someone has to like take a dump. I hope that's not the case. I really wish they would take care of that beforehand. We are good, so if they did, that was very, very fast of them. Props so to them. That was incredible. <laughs> um, that fiber, though. Stay regular, everybody. <laughs> oh, for my God. We're jumping back into the game here on High Ground TV. Uh, thanks for joining us. It's been a pleasure. But uh, I'm Kyle Guy. That's Mott. This is High Ground TV, folks. This is what we do. Some of our best work, and you can tune us in overnight, 4 a.m., classic Chinese Dota. Is it really 4 a.m.? Oh, 3.20. 3.20. It's 3.22 minutes. almost, Mike. Yeah, it's 2 minutes Let's see, dream time. 2 minutes for 3.22. Let's see if dream time can hold on. It's the magic number. <laughs> this is when it gets real, everybody. Um, <laughs> down bottom, they're going to look for an engagement here. Dreamy's got the blank. Dear Lord, Jowlette is dead as hell. That Man. Was drow? I thought that was an illusion. No, she... Uh, <laughs> that was a Drow Ranger at one point in time. She, she was that hero. I think... She doesn't exist any longer, I know that. Not in this plane, no. No, she's dead. <laughs> to put it mildly, MKB now done for the Weaver at 25 minutes in. So, uh... Super and everybody, they're rolling... I mean, what, hey, <sighs> what, what's going on? Just this Enchantress, man. It's... it's. I'm not happy. She doesn't I, even I, She max. couldn't get enough done. I was hoping when they grabbed her she could be more assertive and aggressive, get around and get those pickoffs, yeah. but she was hindered from the start. Yeah. Dreamed on doing that five-man move around and placing all those wards. Yeah. That was to be expected, I yeah. thought. And while well, Tongfu, they just didn't, couldn't seem to come back from that. Their laning phase just crippled. And uh, pretty much from then on forward, Dreamtime has just set the pace for the whole game. And yeah, and like, also... We're going to do what we want. You can't stop us. And they, they really haven't been able to stop them at all. Like There's been like one or two fights that have looked 
okay at the beginning, and then they just get wrecked. So, yeah. but also the the thing is for the Enchantress, she went for the mech, which like I don't like that. I like Enchantresses that are able to get a Midas, or not even a Midas, but like go straight into the Aghanim set. For like, you want to be the semi carry. You could argue that the Sensor could have bought a mech, and he might have been able to use it. But the thing is, also he didn't have that much farm either. So I guess he was kind of forced into that situation. Oh my XCD, god! XCD, please, dude. This Weaver hits please. like a goddamn man. Dude. Please, <laughs> Jesus dude. Christ. Stop going so hard, man. Calm down. It's 26 minutes in. We don't. We don't need to go too crazy. So I'm gonna get this guy a fucking Asper or something. He's like angry as all hell. Yeah, well, I mean, I would be too if I had to play Weaver. Oh. Link in coming out from Unai. He's not able to catch anybody out. Well, I mean, he does the Thunderclap, but the Weaver doesn't seem to mind. They'll back away. They're playing very passive for Dreamtime. And this is what I've talked to. This is what I talked, and I think we've both talked to people around the I talked. I talked. <laughs> let, me, like, let me make my point, dude. So we talked to a lot of people around the house, and like. And Ben came in not too long ago, and we're just like, yeah, I mean, like, if you if you have even, like, a semblance of, like, you're maybe going to lose this fight here, or yeah. you're maybe get, yeah. not going to come out on top, like, you're going to back off and just make sure you play as, like, passively, or not passively, but as, like... They're not risk-takers, Yeah, man. no, they aren't. And I, like, Dota's a risk-taking game, guys. Let's it, double down. It doesn't have to be, but that what, that's what makes for good Dota, is yes. risk-taking. And, yes. and, and, you know, not to say that Chinese Dota is you know, boring, because it's definitely good. They just play very strategically. That's I mean, all. Th that's very true. Like, you need to understand, like, this, this, like, this opinion that Chinese Dota is, like, stagnant and boring and, like, oh, we're gonna farm for 40 minutes. Maybe that's it's how it like, used to be for, like, like, you think about, like, maybe, like, a Back at CI2 and even before that, it was a bit, like, defensive and just, like, okay, farm everybody up because that was how the meta was at the time. But, like, now it's kind of like, okay, we need to be aggressive. Yeah. Dota right now is about being as aggressive as possible and, and having these yeah. high-risk, high-reward plays pay out for you. So yeah. so that's what they do. They be aggressive early on, but then when it comes down to, like, okay, we're at the late-game stage. We don't want to have fucking anything up here. Let's make sure we have everything going our way. They'll make sure they have every single advantage and yeah. avenue for that advantage and go from there. So at 28 minutes in, they have yet to take high ground. Uh, with a, what is it, like a 15,000 gold lead, which you'd say, okay, this game's probably over, but they want to make sure they play as... Um, Efficiently. Yes. 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 I got you, Mott. Okay. No, it's, it, you, I mean, you have... it. it uh, I couldn't agree anymore. I mean, it's just they they play smart. They, they're... The calculations, man. They want to make sure that they have the advantage going in this one, and there's actually like zero risk factor. But oh wow, the reaction time of that jump in is quickly lying, shapes him down, and poor Centaur gets ripped apart. Unbelievable calculations coming out from him. Dazzle with a desperate grave. Can he get away from this one? Trying to make a run. The finger flying out on the enchantress, but she heals up quickly with the help of the wisps and will look to step them back. So Two down all day here for dream time, and I think it's going to be more than enough for them to finally push up the staircase and go right for the base. And that's that's a huge pickup for them. You talk about the reaction time is there instantaneously. And the thing is, too, Brewmaster didn't have his axe for that fight. He just got it, too. The cooldown now, it's there for 90 seconds, so that ultimate not there. He's going to jump it again, but guess who else jumps in? Dreamy you. The Earth Spike going in. Man, that drought died. The Chain Frost, the vacuum as well. GG is called. They knew they could not defend without their core heroes in dream time. There's about two or three minutes of just passive play, but other than that... They were just waiting it out, man. It's like a boxer. They were just ducking and diving, waiting out a couple of rounds, and by the time we got to the sixth round, they just threw the haymaker and knocked them out instantly, and Tong Fu just clearly got shown that they just were not in this game. Like, yeah, no. It was just... It, they outclassed them. Dream time, man. They're going for number one. They move on now. What was that? Two to one now? They move two one after that game, I believe. Yes, they do. Yeah, so, that's uh, you know, they had a strong, solid performance right there, and I would imagine that uh, they're going to try to keep it going. Yeah, I think that, that was, like, that. that's what everyone expected, I think, from Dreamtime, was that solid kind of play style and, like, just being able to absolutely dismantle Tong Fu, who are probably not the top tier in terms of talent here. They certainly could try to make an impact, but with that kind of performance, it's not looking good mm -hmm. for them to start out with. Mm -hmm. They did take a game off of CIS, so... But DT just seems to be on, like, maybe that next level. So, DT, they lose a game also? I'm not sure. They lost two new elements. No, that's right. That's, that's right. right. That was, I, I'm not... Yes. Obviously, I didn't get a chance to watch the game, and I'm pretty surprised, but I'm not, because I think new element's going to be one of those top-tier teams feel like coming to this one, yeah. so... You know, unfortunate for Tong Fu, man, so hopefully they can shake it off and come right back at it into their next one, but uh, for Dreamtime, we'll see if they can keep the pace going. Yeah, I mean, solid start for them, and... 2-1, pretty good to be in. Of course, we are going to take a quick break, guys, and I'm going to grab the schedule real quick from Zori's bed and see what's going on next. And mm. It should be Speed Gaming versus CIS here on this stream with myself, and I think Greg will be joining me. Yeah, Greg's finally going to get off his lazy ass and get back and to the Just start doing work seat. rather yeah. than playing some Spash like a freaking 
Amazing jerk, but we are going to get into that in just a little bit. Not sure when that lobby will be up, but when it is, we'll bring you the action. So, guys, for us here, make sure you follow us here. Twitch.tv slash highgroundtv. Twitter.com slash highground. Twitter.com slash highgroundtv as well. Again, I'm Mott. You can follow me at twitter.com slash Mott32. He's Kyle Guy. You can follow him at Kyle Guy. You can see the nameplates right there. Mm. And uh, I, think, uh, I think that's it, guys. That's it, man. All right. We're going to head out of here. We'll see you all later, everybody. See you all in a little while.